Hello everyone, welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, uh, aka Hembar, and for the suckers who actually watch this, welcome to my weekly update. Uh, just talk about the stuff I did this week. So, I did not write anything, though I've been contemplating it more the past couple weeks than I have for a while. It basically, um, I, I struggled really badly um, writing after my son was born, which was only three and a half months ago, and um, especially with my new job, which I started the same week my son was born, um, and then um, school started back up <laughs> uh, since the new year as well, and so I just haven't written anything, which sucks. I did get a rejection today, actually, which was a big bummer, but anyways, I need to send out some stories. I have like 15 stories I still could probably submit places that haven't been accepted anywhere, so I probably should do that. Um, but as far as reading goes... Um, I'm still reading the book three with my daughters, but the stuff I did finish, um, well, I finished these three right here. I read this one mostly digitally. I have my bookmark in this still. Um, the first one I finished was a converse. No, that's not true. First one I finished was I am legend. I don't have a physical copy by Richard Matheson. I did like it. Um, it's pretty brutal and dark at the ending, but it's very interesting. I feel like, um, it has a good vampire story. It's very short too. Uh, it's not a happy story, though. It's not a happy story at all. The main character is pretty loathable, and the ending is in a lot of ways, too. So, But I did enjoy it. Another book I finished, the second book I finished, was A Conversation Blood by Paulus Kemp. This is his third Aeol, probably Eggle, Egg, Eggle, I don't know, Eggill, I don't know. Aeol is how I say it, because that's how you say Aeol Scala Grimson, right? But... Um, and it's spelled the same way. Uh, Aelum Nix, um, the third one, and the final one. I don't know if the, we'll ever have another one. I feel like there's room for another one. Uh, even though this one gets pretty cosmic. I mean, not like cosmic horror-y. It has some of that too, of course. But like, pretty like, kind of like Stormbringer and Elric, if you know what I'm talking about. So it's still sword and sorcery. Um, and it is very focused. It's even more focused than Stormbringer is. So on just these two, Aeo and Nix. Aeol and Nix. And we also have Jaime, interestingly enough, in this one. He's a character from the first book. He's not in the second book. I'm not sure. I don't think this is my favorite, though, in the series. I'd say book two is probably still my favorite. Um, I like book one a lot, too. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe this is my least favorite in the series. It's still worth my time, though. And it was nice to finally be reading some uh, Sword and Sorcery again. Uh, speaking of Sword and Sorcery, I also read another Sword and Sorcery novel. as Daughter of Agonies by G. Owen Wares. Very short, uh, self-pub uh, book. Sequel to The Pellucid Witch, or Pellucid Witch. Um, I mean, you could read this one first if you really wanted to. The sequel bits are, like, hardly matter. Uh, though there's going to be a third book at some point. I'm very excited. I, I, I reached out after I finished this to the author, and he said he was going to write the third one this summer, hopefully. So um, I really like this stuff. I'm reading another book by Wares right now, actually, because I finished it, and I was like, I want something in the style. He's just so straightforward. He doesn't doesn't tell you anything. He just shows you everything. And he does it in a really pithy manner. It's very sword and sorcery in that sense, right? So, um, and it's a dying earth setting as well, which I really like. Um, I would say probably inspired a decent amount by Clark Ashton Smith's dying earth stuff. Maybe some other dying earth stuff like Vance and, and uh, Wolf, but I really enjoy it. Um, this one was good. I like it. It's pretty horrifying at some points. It's kind of gory. Uh, there is sexual content for those who don't like that, but it's not a lot either. I mean, there's the stories pretty short. So I'm looking forward to re reading more about this guy, though. Uh, Geo and Wares. I know he used to be an editor for like a magazine called Ex Exteris or something like that. Post published Sword and Sorcery. I don't recognize any names in it besides Geo and Wares. Uh, I don't know. I guess maybe he doesn't do that anymore. Um, but, uh, I will probably read, um, I am reading, sorry, The Place of Stars and Bones by him, which is his first publication. I think he called it a novella last time I looked, but it's really short. It's even shorter than this, so a little over 100 pages. So I'm not that far into it, but I'm uh, like a third of the way through it still. So um, uh, it's enjoyable. I don't enjoy it as much as this. Um, it still kind of feels sword and sorcery-esque. Um, it's labeled as weird fantasy, which is a good label for it too. Uh, and it's definitely not like, a lot of modern fantasy trends where, you know, it bogs you down in the world building. It just gives you the story, which is nice. I appreciate that. Speaking of uh, bogging you down, though, 
this is not a book I finished because I still have one more book that I finished, but The Burning Stone. I'm over 600 pages in. This book is so freaking long. That I, probably my least favorite of the three so far, and that's partially just because it's so long. It's just ridiculous. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of it still. I'm enjoying it, and there's some cool stuff that happens in here, and I'm not done yet, so we'll see what the end brings, obviously, but um, it's just so long. Why is Epic Fantasy so sneaking long? And the world building's cool and all, this book so long anyways um it's like 200 pages longer maybe more than the other books the first two books so it's considerably longer than the first two books i'm getting tired just thinking about it um but i am enjoying it and i do want to finish continue the series um i got the fourth book in the series actually but the fourth the fourth book i finished just is it almost it's basically a cheat it's a novelette it's but it's on paperback i got right here that Leviathan whom thou hast made. I made a video for it on for Wednesday next week. Um, just a fun little short story. Uh, we're like religious sci-fi, Mormon sci-fi. I, I I met this guy at LTUE last year, and so I decided I should probably actually read something by him. He signed it for me. But I did enjoy it, but I'll have thoughts already on Wednesday rather than waiting three or four months. It's more like four months at this point to get my reviews out. So um Besides that, I have read a little bit more in Stargate by Andre Norton. Um, not the most gripping thing ever. Um, I have not. This is my second novel by Norton. It is a little bit more gripping than the first novel I've read. A little bit more interesting. Um, though the first novel also had more appeal just because it's the first Dungeon Dragons novel. That, that's appealing. I'm also still reading the Bhagavad Gita, translated by Tasani, Sinsakul, and William S. Wharton. Um, I'm not that far into this. I've been trying to get more into it, but I got another book by, um, uh, Upsala Books, as we all show you in just a second. So I want to get through this one. It's really short. I, I, am, I am enjoying it. I, oh, I don't want to rush through it though. I mean, it's scripture essentially. No reason to rush through that. Um, even if it's not my religion. Um, I got a sticker, Ed Greenwood sticker. It's funny, actually, this is I ordered a mug and a shirt. They sh shipped separately. I got the mug first, but it was broken because the delivery driver had thrown it. Literally threw it. We live on the third floor. He threw it up and missed. So it just, right? Um, doesn't work, obviously. And so they're shipping me another one. And basically, as like compensation, they also sent me a little sticker, which is funny. Ed Greenwood, obviously. Uh, merch. Um, Okay, so one of the books I got this week was Child of Flame. It's actually not, this is not a book club edition, which all my other ones are. When I ordered it, it said it was a book club edition, but they didn't send any pictures. But I just thought, why would you say it's a book club edition if it wasn't? Well, it turns out they don't know what they're talking about, which is actually pretty common with sellers on the internet. You know what I mean? Um, I should I should have found one with pictures, but I was having a hard time because most of them just have a the default picture, right? It's not an actual picture of the item. It's just the cover of the book right that's blurry generally too <laughs> so uh child of flame which is book four and gosh dang it it looks like it's even longer than book three that's embarrassing anyways um no i mean i like epic fantasy but this is the same reason why like i'm really pushing myself to finish malazan this year malazan book is fallen i have three books left i have told the hounds right here on my desk okay haven't picked it up yet. Why? Because it's massive. And I don't want to be in your book that long, no matter how good it is. I'm sorry. Um, why do you have to write books so long? Okay, I'll just tell you that much. Like, I, Unless you're writing like nonfiction. I actually got this last week, but I forgot to show it. Storm Season, book four in These Worlds. So uh, I don't know when I'll get to this, but I am looking forward to it. Um, and then I also got, sorry about that, Woden. A Historical Companion, I think. Yeah, by Stephen Paulington. I have one book by him. It's called The Elder Gods. Kind of focuses on Germanic deities. Um, in general, this one's very much focused on Woden, and it's thick. Okay, this is from Upsal Books, like the Bhagavad Gita or the Beowulf um, that I read early, uh, last year. So I ordered the other only other book they have out because <laughs> they just came out with a fourth publication. It's a new, new press, um, and that is... H. Ryder Haggard's um, Eric Bright Eyes. Is that what it's called? I'm really tired, so I'm kind of blanking. But I actually have a copy of it already, but just not. This one's 
like edited or something commentary from Tom Shippey. So I was like, oh, gotta get that. So I ordered it. So I'll be getting another upsell book. Uh, I think this might be my next um, academic work. I go through in a way. There's a lot. There's a lot of academic works. Okay, guys. There's a lot. Like um, I'm in the middle of both of these. Right. I uh, I have books. I'm in the middle of this one. This textbook. I mean, why would I read the whole thing through? Maybe someone would. In the middle of this. So, I mean, th these are ones I take my time with. Um, there's sometimes, if there's a good narrative, if there's really easy to read, then I'll just push my way through it and just read it like it's a normal book, right? Like I did with uh, Winters in the World, which I made a video for last month. Um, but something like Britain After Rome is really thick. Okay, like even though it's only like 400 pages, it's just like a lot of information to go through. It's really informative and it's really well done, but I can't read it that quickly. So, and in large part, just because I'm taking so many notes. So, anyways, um, I, I imagine maybe Woden will be one I couldn't go through <laughs> directly, uh, you know, from getting to it anyways, because it's over 500 pages itself. And I don't know if I need to know that much about Woden. I did watch a little video that Absolute the books put out, though, from Stephen Politan. Kind of introducing this as like an hour-long lecture thing. Pretty cool. Pretty interesting. Learned some stuff. Just go check it out. Go subscribe to their YouTube channel if you're not already. Um, but uh, I think that is it. Let me double check my notes. There's a lot of books I need to be getting back to. Oh, actually, um, speaking of books getting back to, the big book is Cyberpunk that Tim and I were reading. We finished the first two parts. It's really big, though. So um, obviously, hence the name. Um, and uh, the editor, Jared... Shuren, I believe he, he emailed me uh, telling me thanks for those videos. So <laughs> that's cool. I don't know if I've had that happen before, actually, via just random email um, that, uh, you know, someone I didn't tell about. Like sometimes, you know, if it's an indie author, I'll, I'll tell them I did a video or whatever review. Um, um, yeah, so hopefully we have a good uh, next week. Actually, this next week, happy March, by the way. Um, is uh, the release of the newest Forgotten Realms novel. Now, it seems kind of like a parody of the Dungeons Dragons type novel, which is a shame, but I'll read it anyways, and hopefully there's some enjoyable stuff in there. I imagine it will be. I am glad it's a Forgotten Realms veteran. Veteran enough, right? Jaylee Johnson. So, I mean, it'd be better if it was like Ed Greenwood, but I'm not going to hate on Jaylee. I just feel like, again, the parody aspect. I don't know. But anyways, I'll have thoughts on that. That review will come out soon once I read it, so since it's new. Anyways, uh, Liam from Liam's Lyceum. I will catch you next time. Let me know what you've been reading, what you've been up to. Peace.